So I got submitted for、uh, a competition called Funniest Comic in Tulsa. High praise. It's, yeah, it's I'm a, doing that. <laughs> it's a it's a it's like a nationally touring group or like group of promoters who they go to these clubs and they they talk to the club owners and they're just like who are the comics that should compete in this competition and、uh, I got submitted and I I guess Mark Norman came through it so oh cool it's not a you know it's not like a lame thing. Sounds、mm-hmm. like a cool thing. So,、mm-hmm. um, so that's fun. Yeah, man. You know? That's great. I do think it's funny though. Just like there are there are lots of like they're just kind of excuses for like styles of shows. But there's like I've judged like Oklahoma、mm-hmm. like, Tulsa's funniest comic, and like there's you know there's a <laughs> it, mm-hmm. it's just like or like we did that story we used to do those storytelling shows, Chris and oh yeah, they, they all could, you you know the winner of each one it culminates to the end of the year and then. Compete in like Tulsa's best storyteller. I just <laughs> I love the idea. It's like I'm Tulsa's best storyteller. No,、nope. it's a fi- it's official. It's official. I'm the one. Yeah, yeah.、Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna talk about that today. No, I don't know what we're talking about today. I haven't talked to you in a year. I know. Because, I was just thinking about that because you. I text you. I told Gary yesterday. Yeah,、uh, Chris has gone silent on me. I have texted him, and、no. I'm getting nothing back. Not a <laughs> thumbs up. Why did a, you text me?、I'm, not a bubbles. Not getting bubbles. Like three little dots. Like his usual immediate response. He's thinking of saying something. He's, he wants it. He's read it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything good. He doesn't want to commit to that yet. I can't respond to that in that way. I don't. So. I just, Figured he's been tired, you know. I've I had a little.、Uh, I feel like today's the first day I've got on myself again after being backpacking for、mm-hmm. um, a few days and just un, un,、uh, emotionally recovered.、Mm-hmm. Um, so to catch everybody up to speed who don't, oh, sorry, little email there. Let's, let's go and close out that app.、Um, To, if you if you don't know us personally, Gary and Chris are a, a part of this、uh, group called Mountain Men. Very exclusive group. It's exclusive. Very exclusive. <laughs> of adventurers. Yeah, you guys have uh, uh, summited a fourteen or what are you going on like eleven years in a row, something like that. I think well, that at least backpacked my- for that long. Yeah, tenth or eleventh year. It's only been four different, three different peaks, but tell eleven trips. trips. Tell anyone who doesn't know what it is. Yeah, so it's just an opportunity for guys to get together. We meet throughout the year, talk about our life, talk about our problems, whatever. Seek God, and then we go and、um, climb a mountain. And put ourselves out in the woods in the wilderness to seek God and to become better husbands and fathers and、um, coworkers and bosses and all the things. So, just a way to try to like slow your life down, take some time to refresh and to like reevaluate、um, what you're doing with your life. So, our friends Brian and Lee,、uh, who liked. Going hiking and camping and things like that. They, yeah, they did they, it growing up, and then they kind of started this group of. I should say, kind of. They started a group where they would bring friends up, and it kind of started with like people going through like a crisis in life or going through really difficult times, and it still is that for you know just for people who man find themselves at a crossroads of just like I don't know what I need, you know I don't know what to do, and. But it's also for people who are just simply wanting to grow closer to God and learn more and become better, better men. And there was like, like it, it really happened organically because, like Gary,、yeah. didn't you go on the quote unquote first trip? And it was like four of you, isn't that right? Yeah, yeah. Me and a buddy met Brian and Lee and Corey out there years ago. I didn't know Brian or Lee at the time. 
So, um, yeah, that was kind of the inaugural. And then Gary trip. invited me into the group. And when I came, there was just two, two teams of, I think eight, maybe 10. So it was maybe like 18 or 20 guys. And, and then this year they've, there was over 200 guys that went on a trip this year. So it's just grown exponentially. So like fill in the gaps here, but basically for anyone who doesn't know you, you guys, you meet all through the year Mm -hmm. and have like small group settings or in small group settings. So you kind of, you kind of divvy up, you guys are the leaders of your group. So you, you, what do you guys like? You're going to take like, how many do you take eight people on your team? Yeah, we had eight guys this year. Um, Sometimes you have more. Including um, us. Yeah. Yeah. Eight guys total. I mean, eight or nine guys maybe 10 at the most, but I don't think we've ever had more than nine. Um, we meet once a month and we just share our stories. Yeah. Our life story, our life mm-hmm. stories in some cases, yeah. but it's just a way to get to, to be known by each other and, um, being, yeah, being real and authentic and, um, not really hiding anything, any parts of your life. So that, yeah, um, I feel like it's, it's, you know, people our age, men or women, really, it's a struggle to have close friendships. And it's, it's, it can be really hard to build friendships. Yeah. Um, and so this is one aspect of that is, or one, act, one aspect of this is just an opportunity for guys to, you know, like I was saying, slow down. Like I think so many of us are driven to build all these things that what gets kind of thrown to the side is friendship and our mm-hmm. Culture doesn't really value friendship. Um, I forget who I, someone was talking about this the other day. We talk a lot about community, but we don't really talk about friendship mm-hmm. and like the importance of having people in your life that know your secrets, people in your life that know what your struggles are, um, know where you're tempted to do stupid stuff. Um, there's an incredible power that comes with opening yourself up to people that you can trust to talk about those kinds of things. And an incredible accountability that comes with knowing that you've got people in your life that like, I mean, cause we know like whenever we're tempted to do stuff, we know we shouldn't do where we can be pretty sneaky about it or we can, or we can do things that we know look innocent on the outside. But when you're kind of opening up yourself to other people, they know kind of the tells. And like, I mean, I think about the thing, Adam, you and I, we've not been on a mountain men trip before, but one of a, one of the coolest things in our friendship one time was just, I was going through a difficult season. I was depressed and frustrated. And what I do is I turn to food. Food makes me feel better. Feel Food is kind of a, a comfort for me. And <laughs> I was dropping you off at the airport and you, you saw that I had a, a Brahms cup, which at Brahms is a local, it's a ice cream and dairy the, story. Yeah. Dairy ice story. Cream, yeah. Fast food place. And I had a, I had a Brahms cup in my cup holder in my car. And it, I mean, who would think anything of that? It's just, a, I mean, it's just a cup. You went out and got lunch or whatever and you have a cup, but you knew or like, is everything okay? Like you could see my Brahms cup and be like, is everything okay? And that like being seen like that is a really powerful thing. And I think it's so missing in our lives because yeah. we just live such individualistic lives of like, we don't, you, no one can tell me what to do. I, I'm living out my yeah. own truth or whatever. And it's like, no, well, it's really helpful when you have people in your life to help you confront the difficulties of life together. Yeah. And I, I, uh, I think, I think what, happened with that was I go, Hey, what's going on with this Brahms cup? And you're like, Oh yeah. And I was just like, no, but seriously, what's going on with this Brahms cup? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And people have done it to me. I told you about, I, I do the same thing. I go to, I go to uh, a candy soda. Mm. Um, and uh, my friend Courtney was just like, is that a nerd's rope wrapper? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yep. It's like everything it's else. Okay. It's a cry for help. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But no, that's, no, that's true. Yeah. That's, that's good. So, but I, I think a question people would ask is what, what is the need for the mountain? Why not just, Mm -hmm. I mean, the, I don't know if we've ever talked about on the pod, but I went through a pretty big crisis two and a half years ago or so. Maybe no, actually probably just about two years ago. 
and out of it, we started a, uh, the, the three of us started a Tuesday morning group mm -hmm. where we meet up at a coffee shop that doesn't have good coffee. Um, I think that's important it's to say. Serviceable. Yeah, it's serviceable, but I it's gotten progressively worse. Uh, but we, yeah, we, we've been meeting up there at seven 30 on Tuesday mornings for the last two years. And we've, we've since added pretty strategically three other people that mm -hmm. walking through really similar seasons of life where the, the job change or, you know, crisis or something like that. Um, <laughs> But what what is the purpose of them? I, I don't mm. climb a mountain. Well, yeah. when you say the mountain is just the excuse, mm -hmm. and in a lot of ways it is, but I think it's 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 really important to go. The trip is kind of the culmination of of the you know previous six or seven months that we've been spending time together because there's a you know a thirteen hour drive mm -hmm. to the mountain that yeah. How often are you with with your friends for that amount of mm -hmm. time that you get to have conversations you just that normally wouldn't come up? And then we're we're hiking in with like thirty pound packs for this year was almost four miles to base camp, and we've been training and all that, but it still breaks you down. Mm -hmm. And and then you're summiting a 14,000 foot mountain and that breaks you down more. So we're kind of kind of, to me, it's not the excuse because it plays such a big part in, hum in humbling us and making us uncomfortable. I mean, Chris will tell you mm -hmm. he hates doing these trips, but <laughs> he, he sees the need for it of just, you know, forcing himself to be uncomfortable because that's all we do is fight for comfort. So putting yourself in a spot where you can, you're intentionally going, I'm going to be uncomfortable because I need this. Mm -hmm. Um, and we had such a great trip this year with the exhaustion mm -hmm. getting broke down. One of the guys just going, I got humbled <laughs> by having to ask for help or letting somebody help me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. sometimes, like, guys, you have to take their pack from them. Yeah. Yeah. I I try to not be the one taking the pack, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe somebody younger on the trip can. Gary's all about help, it. You should think about helping him. <laughs> he needs some <laughs> <laughs> No, but that is very hard for men to do is to be like, man, I can't carry this literal burden and I need yeah. someone to help me carry it. It's such a beautiful metaphor that uh, I think, especially men, we feel like we have to be strong and we can't reach out for help or anything like that. But the opposite is completely true. And, and when you are willing to ask for help, it's amazing. As the other team members, it invites you into that person's life in a special way. It's like it's a joy to serve people. Uh, and whenever we just keep our problems all to ourselves, it's like we won't let anybody else serve us. It's like, well, you're actually keeping people from experiencing joy that they might they might really enjoy carrying this pack for you. I mean, there's guys yeah. that are on the trip with us that like they could have climbed the mountain twice, right? And like they're just in really yeah. great shape. And one of them pr practically did, basically did. Yeah, the day before he scouted out where our, where our path was going to be, and literally, basically, just almost summited right there and then came back and did it all over again the next day. So it's like some of these, <laughs> so, so the point is, is like what you might think is a huge, you know, um, Oh, burden. I want to ask for help. Burden for someone else might be something like, Oh, I was getting bored. Actually, this is, it helps make it more of a yeah. challenge for me. I like this. <laughs> so crazy. Yeah. The mountain is, we say the mountain is, is the excuse because the point of the trip isn't to climb a mountain. The point of the trip is to get closer to God but there is something about putting yourself in a dis discomfortable in an uncomfortable position, experiencing discomfort that I think, especially for people in America, where like we're constantly advertised to about how to make our lives as comfortable as possible. <laughs> I don't think we really understand what that does to us. Like when everywhere you go is just extremely comfortable. Yeah. I think, 
I think it makes you a really soft person uh, in a negative way. So I think it's important for me anyways. I know it's important for me to, to create times and places in my life where I go and I, I'm going to be uncomfortable and I'm not going to like it, but it's so good for me. And this year was, was no exception. Yeah. So I was going to ask first, practically, what, what were the mountains that you guys climbed? Where were they? What were they about? We were just outside of Buena Vista, Colorado, and we summited Mount Harvard, which is 14,423 feet, the sixth tallest peak in America. Sixth tallest. Third tallest 14er, third tallest mountain in Colorado. Mm. So it was a gorgeous view. Beautiful. You said so the sixth in America? Sixth tallest, yeah. What's the tallest? Uh, is it Mount Whitney? Oh, I was going to say Denali. Rainier? I don't know. I have no Denali, idea. Denali, is that? Yeah, I don't. I have no idea. Where Where is it? Where is it? Easy, is it easy it? Google search, Adam. We don't nope. know. Okay. I don't know all the answers. Where is Everest? That's a tall one, right? Uh, Everest is in Nepal. Okay. Yeah. Is that the tallest one? Yeah, that's the, the tallest in the world. Yeah. And that's okay. like crazy. We were close like, to that, weren't we, Gary? Like we were in India. Weren't we close yeah, to that? Yeah, we were in. Yeah, India, we were right right by there. Okay. I mean, yeah. it was so cloudy, we saw the mountains once. Yeah, also, but we didn't want to go because they were just like going, they were saying like going to the border of Nepal isn't maybe a great idea. Mm. Yeah, unless yeah. you want to get trafficked or yeah, something. Everest is something like, what is it, 28,000 or 29,000 oh, really? or something like that? And we're, we're going 14,000. So it's a whole nother... A whole nother game. So what you guys did is lame. Lame. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. like Denali is 20,000, okay. 300 feet. I'm looking at North America. I need to narrow it down to just the United States because then it, you know. Is Denali in Alaska? Yeah, I think so. So Riveting you guys... conversation for people who really know about mountains. Yes. And just, stumble around trying to answer basic questions <laughs> oh yeah yes uh so you the the two you climbed were what we just did mount harvard yeah um oh there's oh, two you only did one you were yeah we, two. there's two back there you can you can hike from one peak to the columbia? other columbia is that the other yeah, one? yeah. columbia which um but i just i was when we were almost to the summit i was like i'm let's just save that for later and hike out of here today and go, go stay in BV <laughs> go mm -hmm. and not stay in tents again. Um, and cause we'll go back to that Valley, I'm sure on another trip and to yeah. have Columbia still there, not on my list of conquered peaks will make, will be some good motivation. Cause it, it would have been hard. It would have been like a 12 hour plus day how long did it take you to climb the one summit um well we left at 4 30 in the morning yeah. we got to the, the to the peak about eight o'clock 8 a.m oh was it that early i thought it was nine but it, it could have been 8 30 i remember having a conversation with one of the guys that it's only 8 30 and it's a beautiful day perfect mm. conditions to go summit that other peak gotcha yeah which it was yeah um but it was an additional like three and a half miles to that other peak and then descend it. Um, so it would have been, would have been a lot, a long day. I think we made the right choice by not. So, so, so what do you do when you get up there? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yeah. What get do you up do when there, you, you get up this there? Was you eat breakfast or anything? We had snacks and stuff along the way, and we'll you eat. get a little restaurant up there that you can. Yeah, there, we'll get. A, there's a little donut there, shop. Let the hostess will seat you, <laughs> and then uh, just order right off the menu there. Yeah, fortunately, there wasn't a very long wait. <laughs> um, no, we can we can uh, put some pictures up, but Adam, I can send you our um, okay photo stream. Um, it's a very small summit. Like yeah. there's, and it's very jagged, like large rocks, not yeah. a lot, <laughs> yeah. not a lot of places to sit as a mm -hmm. group. Um, cause typically we get up there and we all just celebrate with each other. And then 
go off by ourselves and it's pretty emotional. It can be pretty mm -hmm. emotional. Um, and then we'll call our wives or our kids. Oh, cause you, talk you to have them. like service. Yeah. You normally don't have yeah, phone, we'll get... phone service, but then at the peak you do have ser service. So yeah. Check in with the family typically then. Yeah. So we'll do, and then we'll do like group photos and stuff and, and then head down. But this one was, um, this Not one was a little bit different. Yeah, it was. There was a lot of people up there, so it was kind of busy. And I was like other people. There were other yeah. People. We we didn't really probably. realize it, but we were arriving on a Saturday, uh, summoning on a Saturday, and so there was just a lot oh. of people that like local Colorado people that were oh crazy. running up there, and so just the summit didn't have quite the reverence that it normally does. Like normally, you're oh, just yeah. like you're kind of the only people up there, and it's just like this is crazy. But this was like, we, we, it's funny, uh, because we got to the, right when we got to the summit, there was this girl there and I think she thought we were a different group or something. She had made reference to us earlier in the day and we were kind of like, I don't know what she's talking about. But anyways, as we get to the summit, she's just right there going, yes, let's go. <laughs> and she knew we're from Oklahoma. So she's like, Oklahoma, let's go. <laughs> just like that's fitting. Uh, uh, you're just like Chad's found his Chad, soulmate. Chad, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> that was funny, but but yeah, so it was a little bit less like reverent as it normally is. But this time, so it was fine. But um, yeah, we uh, had three guys that it was their first fourteener to summit. Yeah, oh wow! And so yeah. that was really cool to let those guys get up there. Yeah, it's quite the accomplishment and you're pretty tired and exhausted and the build up over the months of kind of talking yeah. about it. It's just usually there's kind of an emotional release at that point, but not when someone's in your face yelling, let's go, but let's go. <laughs> she, if, she'd yell, if she had yelled out rise and grind, yeah, it would have been awesome. amazing. <laughs> yeah. You, you get up there and she's like, Steven Stevens? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't think anybody recognized Chris. Oh my gosh! Oh no, I was really dwindling. disappointed in the back country. I had my hopes up big time. <laughs> not not as much on uh, TikTok up there. Yeah. Um. I, what was I going to ask about? Oh, okay. So you that's what you guys did practically, but and we don't. I mean, we we talk about God and our relationship with Jesus on the pod a little bit. Uh, I think it's pretty obvious that we're all Christians, but. Uh, we don't talk about it extensively, but what did you guys walk away with, uh, from the mm. trip? Yeah, I was, um, I was very encouraged just like personally. Um, Chris had some really great stuff to share with me and the rest of our group. Um, that was, it was just very encouraging. Um, and, and maybe, I didn't, I, I wouldn't say any like breakthrough type things, but really solidification. Is there a better word than that? <laughs> a, vocation or vacation? Solidif like a crystallization of oh. calling and, um, and who I am. Yeah. That, that I walked away with. Um, so. Like a, like a, like a deepening of a, of the foundation or strengthening of like the, yeah. Just knowing I being confirmed in things that I've, that I've already maybe felt or mm -hmm. wanted to believe, but having other, other men like confirm that or say that speak, yeah. speak mm -hmm. these things over me. Mm -hmm. Um, like, like what care just, a, just, um, just about being a man. Um, and not what the world per perceives as a man, but being a husband and a father, a good husband and a good father, just being good at being a man mm -hmm. versus being a good man. Mm. Um, little semantics there, but, uh, and leading a group of guys that are there, <laughs> there are guys in there that are very successful dudes, like yeah. vice vice presidents and presidents and running their own organizations and mm -hmm. um, very smart, successful, creative dudes. Um, like, like president of the country? 
Like those like, kind of president? A president I of Canada. Not, not America. Oh, yeah. other but smaller ones. If I said this country, you would recognize it. <laughs> um, yeah, just a strong group of guys that you're like, yeah, you can, I, I can feel inferior mm-hmm. to people in, in those positions. Um, and not that they make me feel that way at all. Cause no, they're all, yeah. yeah. Great dudes. They're all great dudes, but, um, hanging with, with people that are one that are, that are better at the mountains being in the mountains than you stronger than you, which I generally am that guy. Um, is cool. Just going, let them do their thing. Uh, I don't, this isn't, this doesn't make me any less of a man to yeah. not be the one chopping trees down and building giant fires mm-hmm. or leading us up the, the trail, um, to the summit. Mm-hmm. I don't have to be the one doing that to still be a strong person, to be yeah. a strong man. So, um, So, yeah, that's good. That's awesome, man. Sounds it must be nice to have an encouraging friend. <laughs> well, you know, you should see me on the mountain, Adam. Oh, I'll that's when you, you up <laughs> <laughs> when I'm, when I'm in a very weak state. Yeah. That was mostly can be very joke. encouraging. That was just mostly a joke of uh, <laughs> saying that Chris has never been encouraging. To me. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't really work. What about you, Chris? What did you learn? Yeah, I, I, I similar to away. what Gary said, I, I was. Because you've been away. going through a pretty crazy season, like just of being so busy and yeah. just being a, a kind of a pivotal season in your business. Yeah, I, I it's funny. I, I didn't feel like I was going to the mountain for any like business type stuff. I, I feel. I feel relatively at peace with where my career is headed and all that kind of stuff. I, I really, I really feel like God has blessed me incredible, incredibly. And I, I feel like I'm just kind of have peace about just continuing to run that play. But, but like there was some just like, like what Gary said about how it's some really strong, really great men on the trip that, in any other circle of life, <laughs> like they would be leading and I would be following right older than yeah. me, every, like whatever, just like, you're like, this guy's amazing. And what do I have to offer here? Like, so I know early on there was a lot of those, those kinds of feelings of just going like, why am I the one in charge here? Um, but through that, I, I felt like by the end of the trip, I really, God really did use me to, to, to minister, that's a real churchy word, but to impact people around me. Um, and so it was just really humbling in a lot of ways of just going like, it's not about my abilities. It's not about my talent or, or lack thereof. It's really about being obedient and open to being used. I think that's what God taught me on this trip because there's yeah. some things that happened that were, I felt like God was asking me to do some really, simple things, but they were very uncomfortable. Mm. And through that, um, I was able to just serve more people and it was, it turned out to be really, really, really special. And so, um, just, it kind of goes back to the scriptures of not, you know, don't lean on your own understanding, but trust in him. And I feel like that was kind of another, another step in that of like, don't lean on my own, what I see my abilities are or whatever, but just like trust in him and um, do what you feel like he's calling you to do. Even if that's awesome. Yeah. That's great. Gary said that I, I've, if, uh, if, if you're listening to this and you don't know, I have never gone on one of these trips. Yeah, that's right. And Gary said that you two barely mentioned mm. not really having pushed me to go on a trip in yeah. the past. We did talk about that. Yeah. Well, we were sitting there in the, in, at the campsite and I, I don't know, we were just talking and I, I feel like I just remember being like, man, it sucks that Adam's never done this with us. And uh, so we were thinking about that, but I, I feel like we've talked about it in the past 
and you've not wanted to do it. And so we've just kind of let it go. But I don't know. I, I feel a little yes, bit more That is like, fair. That is a fair <laughs> assumption. <laughs> yeah. But just like, I do feel as we took me and uh, Gary talked about it, I do feel like I was kind of, or we were thinking like, oh, we should, we should ask. Well, I would like to too. officially invite right you here. mountain men 2024. Yeah. You're invited. You're invited. Adam. You come to the kickoff meeting. It's no commitment yet. Balls in your court. <laughs> um, it's selling like a timeshare seller. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, yeah, we usually don't talk about that until we're on the mountain. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> There's you have nowhere to go. Yeah. <laughs> when is the when is the kickoff in January? Sorry. Right. Yeah, usually the end of January. Or yeah, January. February. February. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. the The things that I think about it is one. I was telling Gary about this yesterday, Chris, because we he and I Gary and I were yeah, yesterday was having an amazing time. Yeah. Yeah, we couldn't <laughs> get a hold of. We walked over to your house. Tried to say hi, no one there. Did you really no answer yesterday? No, we. I did. I did try to drive by your house, but I I couldn't find it. Oh, it's right away. on the main road there. And then and then uh, my daughter started to cry, and I was like, "Oh, better go." Yeah, I just bought a new house, um, so if that's why Adam couldn't find my house. Yes, that's it. Also, I've never been invited to any of your homes, so. That's not true. Uh, oh wow, that's not true. Next um, episode, we'll talk about that. I I feel like. The thing that you guys talk about with the trips the most is the significance of being vulnerable, like how it puts you in a place where you are vulnerable with other people, other men specifically. Mm -hmm. Uh, That has never been an issue in my life as I am pretty, I I think I'm pretty vulnerable with people. So I think that's the main reason. Kind of sounds like I'm joking, but it's not Mm. because I I don't mind being vulnerable with people. My dad was pretty vulnerable and I Mm. kind of, instilled that in me. Yeah. So that's kind of been the main reason that, and the fact that I went on one camping trip with Gary and I hated it. Um, that was the other thing. Yeah. My favorite, the the thing I was excited about the most was building a fire every night and we, there was a bird band. (laughs) I've never been on a trip with a bird band. We've always had a fire. So, okay. Yeah. That's the fire. Part of it, you know, that is a nice part of sitting around talking. It's great. Yeah. 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 Well, that's where I, I challenged Adam of, um, well, do you think you have something to offer to others? Yeah. With that. Um, cause it is a foreign thing to a lot of guys to, mm-hmm. to, to one talk about their issues. Yeah. Um, to ask for prayer about those issues, um, yeah. to just hang in with a, some dudes like, um, not a lot of guys have, close friends that they can just be themselves. Oh yeah. It's amazing how like people that you go, man, they really have it all together, really capable people. And then you find out they don't, they're kind of alone. They don't have, they don't, they have a lot of people they interact with, but they don't have any real friends. And it's just like, man, that's so sad to me. Yeah. And so, yeah, it is an opportunity for you to serve other people. And I think being vulnerable is part of it, but man, God meets you wherever you are. He he knows he he knows how to challenge you. And I've, every mm-hmm. single trip I've been challenged in a new way. I mean, it's just always something different that will happen that I didn't see coming. And it's yeah. it really is a a really sacred special thing these trips. And uh yeah. So it, it's really awesome <laughs> Good. being on somebody walking with somebody else through their journey. Mhm. Uh, mm-hmm. just going I need to be a better husband. I need to tell my wife I love her more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I need to be more present with my kids. Uh, mm-hmm. Just seeing people be, handle different things. You're just like, oh, that's a great way to handle that issue. I'd never would have thought to do that. Yeah. Just iron sharpening iron, you know? Oh, did you make up that phrase? Yeah. Hey, that man. is good. It's just man getting out there and sharp, iron sharpening iron. And that's what I love about it. Oh, Sorry. My phone. Pastor Bobby, I didn't realize you'd been on a mountain. You know, I thought about it and I'd ne- just never been invited. Okay. Sorry. That's a bad improvisation because I just put a dead end in it. I'm getting distracted here. No, that's fine. No, uh, improv really is about uh, n- no, but 
is what they say. Just finding dead ends and running to dead ends as quickly as possible. Whatever they throw at you, change it. Make it different and say, I don't accept that. Yeah, that's awesome. There it is. Well, okay. Sorry, my phone was dinging. Well, um, you know, am I going to consider it? Who knows? Well, here's here's something you might consider is that the food we ate at two different restaurants in Buena Vista. Um, Eddie line was awesome, but my favorite pizza place in all of the world is crave pizza crave the bee sting. It's delicious pizza. So better good. Than, better than Antico in, in Ooh. Atlanta. Ooh. Yeah. I don't oh, know if I, I would go that far, know. but it is very, very good. Especially coming off the mountain after eating like freeze dried food and oh yes, cliff bars and trail mix. Like yeah, having some like awesome pizzas. Well, um, we've that was my fourth time. Is it going really? there this last week? Because the last year was the last year's mountain men trip was our first time going in that area. Yeah, and then me and Ginger and two of our other friends, another couple met, went up to BV and we four wheeled the back country and we went and ate there two nights in a row <laughs> because it was so, we was like, we're not going to, can we, we don't want to go anywhere and be disappointed. It's just so, good. so we just went and ate at Crave two nights in a row no. and it was equally as good. Double down. Both no. nights. Now, Chris, what was your, how did you um, ha- prepare your coffee on the mountain? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't have any coffee whatsoever. I don't drink coffee, so I didn't think twice about it. I you're you're drink failing. Water. You're failing at your improvisational skills. I set you up to say something funny. Do you want to try you, that again? Let me. You did nothing with it. I still you just, improvise unless I'm in character. If it's just me talking, I feel like I... Chris, something I've appreciated about you, my whole our whole relationship, is that you're always in character. I feel like I'm always throwing some something's going on with Chris today because he's not himself. Uh, he's like, still well, Ginger. This morning, I tired. she went for a walk, and by the time she got back, I was finally out of bed. Yeah, and she's just like, "What is wrong with you? Is something wrong? Because you're you're not acting yourself. Yeah. Cause you just were still in bed. And I was just like, she's like, you're not talking. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I've just been tired. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't, I probably got, what did we say? Three nights on the mountain or just two nights. We were two nights in the back country, two nights in the back country, probably four hours total each night Ooh. of sleep. And then Just honestly, the first so night in BV, I didn't sleep very good. Probably another. Just because it's so uncomfortable, Chris? Yeah. I just struggle. You fall asleep and you wake up like every hour. It's just this is kind of the way it goes for me. Um, so, yeah, I probably got 15 hours of sleep over the course of like three or four days. So it's like my body is still trying to catch up. And then yeah. we closed on our house the day we the day after I got back from the mountain. And yep. so we've yep. just been jumping into a remodel. So no, I am, I am not myself right now. I am very tired. But, okay. Yeah. I mean, day one, we meet at 4 a.m. Yeah. To yeah. leave by 4.30 a.m. Driving for 12 and a half hours and then doing a, almost a four mile hike, 1600 feet of elevation gain. Mm-hmm. Wait, you like drive you drive and then immediately do the hike? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's to the base camp. Hit that altitude. So you, so you drive so you leave at four thirty, you said it's nine hours, is that right? It's twelve and a half hours. It's twelve oh my good lord. Twelve hey, and a half lo- hours. This is your love language, just sitting in a car. Yeah, traveling. yeah, but I'm always looking forward yeah. to what the next part is. Yeah, like, the next part is putting on your pack. So you get there, you get there about, I guess it, it, it's, you get there about 4.30. Yeah, PM. about 4.30. Mm-hmm. And, and then you just pack. put on your pack. Put on your pack. And hike for how long? Trot up the mountain. Uh, Two and a half what, hours. This is probably about three? three hours. Three, three and a half hours, maybe. Three and a half hours of just going up. It was, it was a nice hike though. It, it was, was very pretty. Yeah. It was pretty. Is it Colorado's, pretty steep? Uh, it wasn't too bad. No, 
It wasn't. There were some like stairs, some like like <laughs> stairs? trail maintained stairs. <laughs> yeah, one time and though, Gary was like, "Let's go on this little hike," and it ended up being like several miles long. He was like, "It was just going to be a little stroll," and it's just every yeah. time. I take yeah. my five-year-old children with uh-huh. me on this hike. That's what you got to spend the year training, strengthening your body, strengthening yeah, your you lower body. That is, one huge, that is one huge reason I have not wanted to do it is because you guys meet up on Saturdays and you go, you you climb this hill on the side of the highway yeah. that's incredibly steep and you do it 20 times in the blistering sun. Yeah. Well, if you get up early enough, you don't have to be in the sun. Yeah. Bad. But I only went twice this year. You only, yeah. Well, you so, also ran a half marathon this year, so I feel I like did. You that was my it. trade, <laughs> my trade off. Did you do it a bunch, Chris? I did. Yeah, I didn't do it as much as I have in the past, but I still did it a lot of times. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So yeah. So so you don't get to bed. Is it, uh, how long does it take you to hike? You said three and a half hours? Yeah, so you get there in the early evening, get your camp eight, set up. 8.30, 9 o'clock? That's pretty late. No, it wasn't no. that long. Oh, it was less than... It was like... I mean, oh, oh. It was less than... We had, we had at least an hour Yeah. by the time we got there. Of daylight, you mean? Yeah, at least. Okay. Because, I mean, it's like nine something by the time that it's dark. Okay. And so what you, the tents are already set up because they're left over from the last group that was there. Is that right? Yeah. Which and so what you, awesome. you just have to kind of get settled and build a fire. Yeah, just pack everything, go get some firewood, find the water, water yeah. the stream. Cause we filter our water. Um, and then, and then you go to yeah, bed thinking cool. like, Oh my gosh, I'm so exhausted. I'm going to sleep like a rock. And then you don't, and you kind of <laughs> wake up every hour. You go, oh my God. You're, I'm bad. So tired. You're a bad salesman. I for slept the- I, I'm good. just trying to be real because that's yeah. honestly like, no. that's the part of it that I don't really enjoy. Like, I don't like being dirty and you're dirty the whole time you're there because it's dusty and yeah. dirty and everything. And I don't like. Do you guys share a tent? Uh, we yeah, have, but not this. Not Gary got no, his own tent this time. Not us, but Chris shared a tent. I had my own tent just by. I just grow your own tent. I don't, everyone just Worked picked out. a partner and I was left there standing by myself. Yeah. Um, we had two guys that brought their own little bivvies and another guy in a hammock. So, um, it just worked out. And he slept in the out. hammock all night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. He sleeps pretty good, I guess. Yeah. I think, I think I'm going to, he's an arborist. Out. So yeah, he's it's an just arborist. natural. You wouldn't understand for him to be up in the trees. No, I, he's not warm I don't even trees. know what's. I don't even know what words mean. Um, does he have a does he does he have a blanket? Yeah. Oh yeah, he's yeah. he's fully prepared for uh he's got like an underlayment that goes underneath his sleeping bag as the layer of warmth. He's got a canopy over his tent in case it rains. Oh, crazy. Um yeah, he's all set up. But it's still very uncomfortable. You 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 start a fire, the smoke hits you, so you smell like smoke. And then it's, it gets cold. There's, um, so, so then the wind blows, like you just, you can never really totally get comfortable. Like if the sun's yeah. out, a lot of times you're too hot. And then if it go, the sun goes away, then you get too cold. It's just constant. Like there's nowhere to sit, you know? <laughs> I bring a chair. Yeah, Gary brings a chair. Chris I regrets need, bringing a chair. I know. I need to bring a chair. Yet but doesn't bring I need a chair. To. But yeah, it's just, but I feel like that's part of it for me. It's like there's something powerful yeah. about <laughs> putting yourself in a place where I'm, everything isn't designed to please me. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh huh. Every. What, what were you going to say, Gear? I was, Chris is just trying to punish himself. Like, the, obviously. <laughs> the, it's like you punish yourself. You yeah. still, I had two sleeping mats that I slept on and I slept, I slept decent, better than yeah. it sounds like Chris did. Um, I had a chair, more comfortable sitting around the fire talking than Chris, which you probably use somebody's chair yeah, at some it, point. Like even walking around, like to, if you go exploring, there's nowhere to sit. There's nowhere to like, nothing is yeah. behind for your comfort is kind of more what I mean. At camp, it's not that bad, but um, yeah, it is hard that when there's a breeze, you're just like, 
oh, I'm freezing. And then you get in the sun and the breeze stops and you're like, oh, I'm so hot. <laughs> and then you're just like, I'm just going to go get in my tent yeah. <laughs> where, where it's a little more consistent. Yeah. So, you can't are terrible at sell, selling this on me. We're not trying to hey not, no salesman. It's it's a call. I'm just out, trying yeah. to hey, hey, just trying to be real. Just it's, trying to be it's just a matter. Do you want to be a better husband? Do you want to be Whoa. a better father and friend? Shots fired. This is the only I way mean, to do it. Yep. So yep. until you climb that mountain, mm-hmm. you never yeah. you always just be think, lacking. Just think of the stories you'll be able to tell. I mean, I do have a good closer from the that one. One of your teammates carried you yeah. to the base camp because that's probably what would happen. <laughs> that's very true. Yeah. In fact, I, I'll try to remember to put, um, I'll put my camping story that I have told on stage at the end of this oh, good, episode yeah. so you can hear all yeah. about our, our, uh, my and Gary's experience. Yeah. That, I think that was my second backpacking trip. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you were oh, brand new. Oh, yeah. Like you were and just so it. it was just like I don't I didn't know it was gonna rain the entire time. I didn't yeah, know to prepare for that. Yeah. We went white but, water rafting as well, Adam. I did hear about that. That I was excited about because I love I mean I've never been rafting. I, I go kayaking, which I love, which is different but also fun. It was so fun. Uh, it, the water was yeah. freezing. And yeah, the man, wind was blowing at times, so it was very chilly. How do you how do you go? Who's taking these rafts up there? It's a company. You go to a, a sir, a guide, yeah, an outfitter oh. that. Okay. Yeah. They okay. give you your your PD, P, what are those things called? It's like a life jacket, but it's okay. Oh yeah, and helmets and. So was this like after you hiked back? You went with yeah, one DV. Oh, okay. After. It wasn't like. It. Yeah, it wasn't like a, you ha- you had rafts and you're like, and then we'll go over, we'll walk over here. And... No, no, because no, we would have killed ourselves had yeah. we went down. Is it like movies, you know, where it's like kind of crazy or like when you see documentaries of people? It's, like there, we can show you some photos, but yeah, there are brief it, moments the photos, of, of very crazy stuff. But by and large, yeah. it's pretty relaxing. Most of it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's moments so there's of like frenetic craziness, but most of the time, seven of us funny. on a raft, yeah, and having to coordinate your paddling strokes and mm. oh, there's training involved. Oh man, yeah. I mean, there's like three minutes of training involved, <laughs> involved, but but you're gonna leave it's feeling lovely. like you learned something. You know, you got a new skill, yeah. yeah. <laughs> A new feather to put in your cap that you can definitely use in other situations oh, yeah. in Oklahoma. Um, well, just the teamwork, yeah, teamwork of, you know, you know, the coordination of everybody rowing at the same time. And, That's yeah. everything. That's everything. Oh man, That's we gotta, we I'm glad my son's on a football uh, team because he's learning. He's learning about teamwork. We just I feel like I learned another comedian. language. The guy would the, the commands <laughs> he would yell out. I I would almost say I'm bilingual. <laughs> he's like front left back. Front, right, forward, two. You got to know in the, the most... moment what that means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Because not, not only your life depends on it. Right. Yeah. The no, six no, other men in your raft. And, you got... what, and that's what responsibility. That's right. You're Five walking away men. learning about responsibility. It's a brotherhood. We each have our, each other's backs. Yep. <laughs> Uh, that's good. amazing we had this um, um joke about chris the whole time that every photo that was taken of chris <laughs> he just looked confused and uncomfortable that's it that's every, that's all the time that's all the time it's, i yeah. know i was like this is yeah. not news to me anytime i don't I'm, need to go to the mountain to learn that yeah if i'm uncomfortable this is the face you're gonna see <laughs> <laughs> Low, low so brow. This, everything was like. <laughs> yeah. What do Sorry, I do with not this, watching this food, this spoon of food in my hand? <laughs> yeah, that was fun. No, it was good. Uh, well, we got to wrap this up. Wrap it. Uh, and while this hasn't been a very funny episode, uh, I have enjoyed. Uh, for one, this is the first time that I've actually gotten to catch up with both of you to learn about how your trip was. Mm-hmm. Um because you guys just got back and and uh, I didn't see both of you together this week. Uh, 
So hopefully if you're listening to this, you enjoyed it. But I do, we do, we are comedians. And Gary's not, but Chris and I are. And we do want to promote a pretty significant show that's coming up on September 24th. That is ex- Christopher Munch. That's right. Headlining, headlining his first comedy club, um, the Looney Bin Comedy Club in Tulsa, Oklahoma. No one's surprised. Uh, I talk about them all the time. Um, you're doing a Sunday night show, and you are it's it's a it's something you're trying out. Oh, you're yeah. doing your character. I'm bringing the characters out. I'm going to bring the characters yeah, out bring to the characters. have some fun with with people there. So, yeah, yes, carnage might ensue. Who knows what's going to happen? We don't. We don't know what's going to happen. I'm uh I'm gonna feature for you. Uh, I think he'll probably be part of Pastor your... Bobby's going to be there. Revival might break out. We don't know. Oh, <laughs> we don't know what's going to happen. Pastor Bobby, how do you feel? How do you feel about stepping into a comedy club slash bar? You know, normally I would be in there. You know, but I, I normally I wouldn't be comfortable with that. And quite honestly, I I'm not comfortable with that. Um. <laughs> We are going to have a dry policy while I'm there, and no one will be drinking in my presence. Oh, really? Um, okay. But, you know, the light shines the brightest in the darkest places. Amen. <laughs> and so I'm excited to be there just to shine my light. Amen. Isn't that good? <laughs> That's good. I don't think the club's going to let you have that dry policy. That's what... Uh, well, I walk uh, then. Bobby walks. <laughs> they would be like, this is the only way we make money. <laughs> um, but the 24th, it's great. They can I, and have I'm excited the drinks because... at the tables. Just don't sip it in my presence. Yeah. If That's I'm... all I'm saying. <laughs> okay. Okay. For the other performers, by all means, enjoy. But while I'm on stage, don't even sip it. Maybe if you could just ask them to put, them, put their drinks under their table. Put them so you under your it. seat. <laughs> and then you can enjoy them on your time, but you're not going to enjoy the alcohol on my time. Okay. Fair enough. Right. Fair enough. Um, I just did a show uh, there. I've done so many shows there recently, but with Isaac, I I, I opened for Isaac Witty, our, Isaac, our pal. Yes. Uh, who's a, who's clean comedy. We had, a, we had a great show. We had over a hundred people and it was just a blast. That's awesome. And uh, so I'm, I'm excited to uh, more of that to, to do the show with you. So that's going to be great. So make sure make you can get your tickets at uh, 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 comedy dot com and uh, click on the Tulsa tab, and you'll see that September twenty fourth. And then coming up, real hot, real Ooh. hot. Let's see. I think yeah, this will this will play before. I'm opening up for Dustin Nickerson. Yes, August twenty sixth. Uh, at Bricktown Comedy Club in Tulsa. And you can get your tickets at DustinDickerson.com um, or you, you can visit my Instagram profile and hit the link in my bio. And uh, it's going to be great. I, I checked in with him yesterday. Tickets are selling like hotcakes. All the VIP tickets are gone. So that's good. Like the, mm-hmm. the closer to the front of the stage, tickets are gone. So it's all general admission now. And um, it's going to be a fun show. I walked in the club the other day. It's very nice. And... We're gonna. Yeah, it's awesome. We're gonna have a great time. I'm so excited. Yeah, I got to get my tickets. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Get your tickets. Uh, Do you have your tickets? All right. Is there... No. Yeah. Every time I see you guys, you always say, "Oh, I got to get." My oh yeah, I got to do that. I know. Just, oh, sold out. Dang it. Sold out. Shoot. Maybe you know a guy who can get me in. I don't know about that. Uh, oh, we should uh, give a big shout out to our sponsors. Number one, Northern Creative, yes. which is Gary's company. Uh, video production, art, animation. Check out their work at northern.work. And then, of course, Looney Bin Comedy Club in Tulsa, Oklahoma. You can check out looneybincomedy.com for their upcoming headliners. And uh, if you call ahead on a Wednesday night, call up to the club, then you and you work in the service industry or your first responder, you can get a half price ticket Thursday's ladies night. So you can call up on a Thursday night, Ooh, reserve your ticket, I say know. you're a lady and uh, get a half price ticket. We are very thankful to both of our sponsors. Very thankful. Yes. Very thankful. All right. Any closing words from anyone? Pastor Bobby, you want to close us out? This has been such a joy. It's the joy of my life just getting to share with you both. I mean, what we have 
is so special. Don't let it go. Amen. <laughs> Thank you so much for being a part of this program. Thank you for your steadfast viewership and listening ship. We are blessed to have you in our lives. Amen. Blessings. Oops, wrong catchphrase. <laughs> Ah, isn't that good? Isn't that good? All right. Love you guys. (laughs) See you later. 